do we need to compute a nasty limit every time we want to differentiate a complex function? Fortunately not. The derivatives of real and complex functions are defined in a very similar way, which means that we will be able to use a lot of rules from calculus if we want to differentiate a complex function, as you will see in this video. As we say, df dz equals f prime of z equals limit delta z to zero of f in z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z. So that's the same or well, similar definition as in calculus, which means uh, we can use similar rules because the proofs of those rules go in the same way as in uh, the uh, as the, the proof them in the calculus. So for example, uh, we have that the derivative of a constant equals zero. You can see that using the definition, because if you have a constant, your f in z plus delta z equals c minus f of z equals c equals zero. The derivative of z equals one, because in that case, your f of z will be z plus delta z, and your f of z z, so you will get z plus delta z minus z divided by delta z, plus one in, in the derivative. And you can take a constant out, also prove it just using the definition. Furthermore, we have the, the rules we know from calculus, sum rule, product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. They all hold, and you can prove them in the same way as you did in calculus. And that's nice, because then you know, for example, that you can apply the product rule multiple times, so you can find the product of z times z, the product of, uh, by applying the product rule, and continue with z times z times z, etc. So you can find the derivative of z to the power n, and it works the same as in calculus, it just equals n times z to the power n minus 1. And now you can apply this rule over here, you can take constants out and you can use the sum rule, so you can extend this to all polynomials. So the derivatives are all polynomials, are just what you think they would be, because the same rules apply as in calculus. So let's do an example. We have here, we want to compute here the a derivative of 1 minus 4 times z squared to the power of 3. Well, chain rule applies, so that equals 3 times 1 minus 4 z squared squared times the derivative of 1 minus 4 z squared, if this derivative exists. But then we see that uh, we over here we have a polynomial, we can use the chain rule and the product rule, etc. Uh, to differentiate 1 minus 4 z squared, that's just minus 8 times z. So our derivative will be minus 24 times z times 1 minus 4z squared squared. Now, the last property, which is also similar to the one we know from calculus, differentiability is stronger than continuity. Differentiability implies continuity. And why is that? Well, if you take the limit from z to z0 of fz minus fz0, well, the function is continuous and this limit equals 0 because limit exists and equals f set zero, so the difference will be zero. However, we can write this as follows, we can multiply by one, limit z to z zero of f z minus f set zero times one z minus z zero of z minus z zero. Now we have limit z to z zero of f z minus z zero divided by z minus z zero over here, and that's just your f prime of z zero times z minus z zero. Now we assume that the derivative exists, we assume that f is differentiable, then uh, this limit over here exists and the limit will be the product, the second part goes to zero, which means that the total limit equals zero, which means that in the limit z to z zero of f of z equals f z zero and f is continuous at z zero. So differentiability is again stronger than continuity.